hypothetical and realistic shot of winning their first title. For the first time since 99, the AMA Motocross Championship is coming down to the final round. Eight different moto winners, five different overall victors, but only one rider gets the title. The final round, San Bernardino, California, now on speed. Glen Helen Raceway Park, the final stop of the 2007 Toyota AMA Motocross Championship, the Giant RV Motocross National. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen alongside multi-time National Motocross Champion Jeff Emig and Aaron Bates covering the action for us down along the starting line. These fans are ready. Four riders set to battle it out for the Motocross Championship. And which rider will be champion after Ricky Carmichael's reign on top of this class? Is it going to be Michael Lessey? Well, he's fourth in the points coming into today. He's got an outside shot. Has to go out, win the motos, and have a little bit of luck. We take a look at Mike Alessi's overall finishes for the series. He's been very consistent, very good at the end of the series, but has yet to win an overall, though he has won a moto. Of course, Tim Ferry sits third in his Kawasaki's best shot at taking the championship since James Stewart fell out due to injury. And here's Tim's season. That 11th at Southwood really hurt him. At New Berlin, Unadilla, he was second. At Washougal, he was first. Since then, the last three, he's lost a little bit of momentum. Honda's hopes ride with Andrew Short in the number 29. He's second in the championship as we take a look at Andrew's season. Really, he was just the very beginning at Hangtown in Sacramento where he really kind of stubbed his toe, but outside of that, he's been inside the top five all through the season. At Freestone in Texas last week, he had the opportunity to win the overall. He would have the points lead going in. Instead, it's Grant Langston with the stranglehold on the points. Taking Yamaha right to the top, giving him and them maybe a chance of winning. Wow, if he hadn't had that 10th at Lakewood, look at what kind of a year he's had. But at the end of the season, Delmont, Freestone, Grant Langston has all the momentum coming in here to this championship and a slight points lead. So here's a look at the points difference. Langston on top. Can he hang on and win the championship for Yamaha here today? We talked to the contenders before the day got underway. It, like I said, it's my third year going for this championship. And I'm just going to go out there and just race to my ability. You know, not worry about anybody else but Michael Lassi and get the whole shot and just check out, you know, and not get into any, any trouble, you know, and just race my own race. And I, I mean, if the championship happens, that'd be awesome, but it would take a lot of luck on my side for it to happen. For myself, I want to go 1-1. One, one. I mean, that's, I'm going to be the happiest knowing that in the last race I did the best I could. And, uh, you know, whatever happens with the points, I mean, that's kind of out of my control. I can only do my best, and uh, I'd love to go out with a, with a win. Uh, especially at Glen Helen, the last national of the year. I think probably one of the toughest ones, and uh, try to get some good starts and see what happens. I'm just going to go out there with an open mind and have fun with it and uh, try to win. Obviously, that's every racer's goal. But at the same time, enjoy the situation because I don't know what's going to happen again and, and try to be as positive I can. It seems like it's been working for me. No, I've been in a situation, and... I know how to handle the pressure, I think. I don't know how they're going to deal with it, you know. Um, I know I deal with it all right, but uh, I think the ball's kind of in their court as well. I think some of those guys have made some mistakes, and when they had, the opportunity was there, you know, didn't quite pounce on it. And um, so, uh, you know, it works into my favor, but, um, you know, everyone has one more shot today at it, so uh, hopefully we can pull it off and have a good day. Tremendous amount of momentum riding with Grand Langston, and as you look at his season, boy, there was some times early on where it would have been very easy for him just to give up on any shot of the championship. He's battled his way through, and now he might win it. Let's go back and show you some highlights from Moto number one. And as the gate drops on this one, it's the Honda of Andrew Short, number 29, getting the whole shot. The man second in the points. And I'm telling you, this big freeway. Uh, start and first turn here. This is where you want to be out front. And Short gives up the lead in the second turn. And he does it to the man who's fourth in the points, the KTM of Michael Lessie. So Michael Lessie's game plan at this point was to go out, get the whole shot, 
not, you know, not have any problems with anybody else, and that's what he did. Don't adjust your dials. That is the three of Mike Brown, who's back over here racing for the first time this year. Mike Brown had an awesome moto, was right in there with the mix, but I've said before, it's so hard to battle with championship contenders because you just can't be at that same intensity level, even though Kevin Wyndham here, who's just stalking Mike Alessi, just really putting the pressure on just outside of that uh, championship contention. Wyndham not in the championship fight, but could certainly play a spoiler on this day in the points and mix it up and take a few away from some of the guys who really wish they could take that one last point. But then Wyndham had his own problems. Just loses the front and coming out of that turn, just catches one of those Glen Helen edges, uh, takes the front wheel out from money, and you can see it took the wind out of his sails also. That it did, and meanwhile, the fight for second between the two rivals in the championship, short on the 29, the red Honda, and the man leading the points, the blue and white riding gear on the Yamaha, Grant Langston, with Alessi just in front of them, hoping that something will go his way, give him a shot at this title today. And what was great is you've seen these riders both race down the hill, take a wide line, and then drag race all the way up to the top of the hill. Short almost lands on Langston, but Langston just muscles that position away from Short. The one rider we're not seeing who is in this championship fight is Tim Ferry. Not a good moto for him. Ferry was right there. Our, our top five riders were all bunched up at about the 20 minute mark. And then Ferry went down, Wyndham went down. But it was Grant Langston who came from behind, went past everyone. Unreal ride for Grant Langston. So Grant Langston goes on, finishes well in moto number one, takes the win. Just in front of Michael Lessie, as you take a look at the Toyota Trucks results page, Barry finishes fourth, and we head down to Aaron for the winner of Moto number one. I don't know if this crowd could get any more amped up, especially with a race like that one. Grant, obviously you're thrilled right now with one moto of the season left to go. You've extended that points lead. What are you going to do for this next one? Uh, I've just tried to do a little bit of the same. You know, uh, first half that moto wasn't anything special for me, but uh, second half I just... I just put my head down and thought about that championship and didn't want to lose any points and make it tight. So uh, I found some decent lines and I uh, just picked up my pace and uh, it was awesome. The crowd was going nuts and uh, you know, my Yamaha was working great and uh, you know, I didn't get the greatest of starts but uh, once, I, once I got in my rhythm I, it was good from there on out. So the championship now moves on to the final moto of 2007. We'll drop the gate on moto number two when we return. Wednesday, the high revving, tire shredding, wheel standing, two wheeled action returns for an all new season. Superbikes, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific, only on speed. Good look above the racetrack here at Glen Helen, San Bernardino, California. Season finale, the Giant RV Motocross National. Everybody getting lined up in the gate. There's Michael Lessie, final adjustments made. This is it, it comes down to this one final moto in all of the motocross championship. Our lights champion has already been crowned. Thousands of people here to see this final moto and see who will be the next motocross champion. Well, Mike Brown made an appearance here at Glen Helen. He's with Aaron. That's right, guys, you're taking a look at a familiar face, the 35-year-old of Mike Brown aboard the number three. Mike, you're back here trying to get that a little more points just in order to keep that number, but you've been over in Europe racing successfully at that. What's it like being back here, especially being that you have only raced here in the MX class at Glen Helen last year? Uh, it's good to be back racing with all the people I've grown up with, and uh, yeah, it's been a long year. I've been away, for, away from home for a while, but uh, Nah, it's good. These guys are going fast, and I think I just got to get out of the gate and go with them the first four or five laps, and I'll be okay. Eight, six, that first moto, not so bad. He said he's having a little bit of a tough time adapting to being back in America with these large jumps. I think he got it in the bag, though. Good luck to you. Well, with our progressive direct pre-race report out of the way, time now to get set to go racing. Here's the format. 40 riders in the gate, two motos on the day. We already did moto number one. Each moto is 30 minutes plus two laps. Top 20 riders scoring points, and of course, combination of your finishes between the two motos sides who wins the overall. Langston and Alessi right next to each other. And this part of the track, the backwards falling individual gate is so important for setting yourself up for this final race. 
In our Suzuki starting grid, a lot of great riders, but it's going to be those top four, of course, that we'll focus a lot on here in, in this moto. And it all comes down to this. All the work by the teams, the technicians, the family, the friends, the trainers. It all comes down to this one moment and who can finish this off. Any indication of where you think you want to be in that gate as you head towards turn number one here in this final moto? Uh, middle to inside, but it's so long. Uh, they really till the dirt up. It's extremely deep. Horsepower is key. You see Michael Lesson gets a great jump out of the gate. Championship on the line, and Michael Lesson takes the first shot towards taking the title. He gets the whole shot, and Kevin Windham is right behind him. This is a replay of the first moto. Both these riders, extremely good starters, great technique, showed it here. Michael Lessie came up just a little bit short in winning that first moto, ended up second. Going to try to redeem himself here in the second moto. Andrew Short rides in third, so the Honda rider right there, and here comes Langston on the outside in the blue riding gear on the Yamaha. Langston gets inside, takes over third. Same place where he passed Andrew Short the first moto, same exact line. Langston has a 13 point lead now over Short at the end of moto number one. So Andrew's gonna have to battle back here quickly. That's a pretty, pretty good cushion there for the points, but I've always said you have to keep your head into it. You have to keep racing forward here in this final moto and not think about the points. The best way to stay focused, just keeping your game, keep riding hard. Let's go back, Jeff, and take a look at that aggressive direct hole shot replay. And anyone from the inside all the way to the outside can get the hole shot here at Glen Helen. You can see how wide it is and how long. Look at Michael Lessie on the front of your screen. He, our cameras can't even keep up with him. 450 KTM went through all of the gears as fast as a bike will go going into this first turn sweeper. Look at how they fan out. I mean, you're 10 wide sections through there. Well, when you've got the throttle locked, there has to be some runoff room. There's Langston back behind Wyndham. Now, Jeff, it's very late in the afternoon as we've dropped the gate here on the final moto of the season, and you can see the shadows have grown considerably here over the end of the day. And it, this track is so treacherous at this point as we see Andrew Short coming through this man-made sand section. They call it Life's a Beach. It's, uh, <laughs> it's no picnic, though, I can tell you that. The shadows here at Glen Helen, as, as, as the riders go up those hills and down the hills, that, the braking bumps and the acceleration bumps are, 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 are huge at this point. There's all kinds of rocks and stuff coming out of the hillside. When you get into those shadows, when you're going from the sunlight to the dark, that's when you can't see the edges. You can't see those boulders or little rocks coming out. You see how the shadow's creeping across the track there. So difficult. This could play a major factor in the outcome of this motor and possibly the championship. Here's one of those big hills and climbing up right here. And that camera angle doesn't really give you an indication of just how steep that hill is. It is so steep. If you come off of here this year, they took the corner and pushed it out a little bit, so you come off the top of Mount St. Helens with even a little more speed. And you see these riders fighting for the inside. Grant Langston trying to use the outside and sweep around. It's a little bit smoother on the outside. Um, not quite as much water down on the outside. Look at that, just completely in the shadows, and then you explode into the sunlight, and then back down the dark side of the moon. Oh, I like that. Well done. Oh, oh down goes Alessi, right out of the lead, and maybe out of the championship, because there goes Grant Langston. Oh, that's so disappointing for Michael Alessi, who was executing his game plan to a T here this second moto. Let's take a look at the replay. See Alessi coming down. Watch him grab a handful of the front brake right there. Just a small twitch. 
kicks the front wheel out of the line, pitches him over the bars. And what's ironic is that's the same place where number 14, Kevin Windham, fell the first one of and Kim Ferry. Well, number 14 is currently number one. Wyndham leading here in moto number two on the Sobe Samsung No Fear Honda. And Jeff, he crashed out of moto number two, and it cost him dearly because if he had run decently in moto number one, he ended up finishing fifth. But he was running higher than that. He could win the overall if he could hang on and win this one here in moto number two. Yeah, and as Wyndham came around with the lead into the main spectator area, you just see tens of thousands of Kevin Wyndham fans come alive. See one of the veterans, one of the fan favorites out there with the lead. Oh, and he does have a lot of fans. Well, he's earned it over his, his motocross career. He has been outstanding. Having a pretty good run here in moto number two is Kevin Wyndham. Of the MX 2007 Motocross National, Greg Albertine, all the way from South Africa, the last man to take the championship before Ricky Carmichael, and now it sits with another South African, Grant Langston, leading the points. And obviously, patriotism is taking place here. Greg, you're out here supporting your hometown, South African boy. What does this mean to you? Well, I'm just very happy for Grant. I mean, obviously, it just shows how long I've been out of the sport that Ricky and how long Ricky's dominated that I was the last guy to win a championship before him. So uh, very excited for Grant. I mean, it just proves that consistency pays off. And if you're there every race, you never know what can happen. So uh, super pumped for him. What kind of advice did you give Grant heading into today? Well, he's got a little margin, and I said just pay, play those margins. You know, he's proven that the last few motos, he comes on strong at the end. He's got the fitness, he's got the speed. So rather work on that. Don't get out there and get too aggressive the first few laps. Get settled down and then let the race unfold. Uh, that seems to be pretty good advice. Uh, Greg Albertine, former, former national motocross champion, world motocross champion, multi-time. He knows what he's talking about. Michael Essie had the lead, just crashed before he went to break, and he slipped back to third now. And I tell you, Michael Essie has had an outstanding season for the Motocross Championship this summer. He's really put himself on the map here, and uh, he's been so close so many times, and I think it's so definitive. He's, a, he's won a moto, but he has not won it overall, and he's just came into this uh, race here today 15 points down from the lead. But uh, great season for Michael Lessie. Battle for fourth going on here with Andrew Short in the 58 of Josh Hill. That's a huge jump these guys are hitting. Boy, there's a lot of hang time here. Yeah, wide open on a 450. You jump as far as you can. Another jump over in the back. This is a totally new section this year. And what they did was they routed this back to, to spread out the spectators some and add in this tabletop. Steep uphill and over the top here, this tabletop. Pretty cool part of the track. Oh, I love watching the guys sail over that section. Josh Hill jumping on a 450. He was a lights rider earlier this season. Midway through the season, just could not get it going in the lights uh, division. Pretty much went to all the heads of Yamaha, team managers, Keith Picardi, everybody, week after week said, hey, I want to ride a 450. Give me the opportunity. Give me the chance. I'll show you that I can run with the best guys. So far, he's done that. He's backed it up. Yeah, he really has, and, and that's going to bode well for him in the future, I would think. Watching from high above in our Honda Aero cam, short, second in the championship, and running in fourth place right now. It's not where he needs to be if he wants a shot at taking this title. And it's a tough position to be in where you were so close to the championship, and now you start thinking at this point because you know that the championship has slipped away. We've not talked about everyone having their hands on that number one plate. It's all, that, that number one plate starting to go Grant Langston's way right now. All the other hands are starting to, starting to let loose. Now, Albert T mentioned how long it's been since somebody outside of Ricky Carmichael has won this championship. And it's just incredible to think how many years Ricky won this title. Is it seven in a row? Yeah, and, and no matter who wins the overall and motos today, the second moto, Carmichael will still have the most overall wins and the most moto wins this season. Well, 
Kyle will be right back to see if Kevin Windham can hang on for the win and can Grant Langston take the championship. Finale for the AMA Toyota Motocross Championship, round 12. Here Glen Helen Raceway, Kevin Windham out front leading it, trying to pick up the final moto win of the year. Just really having an outstanding ride today other than that one slip up in the first moto. So we take a look at Grant Langston and Michael Lessie still charging all the way to the checkered flag. What a great season for Michael Lessie. He's really riding hard here today. And if it wasn't for that one little bobble, he'd probably still be leading this moto. Grant Langston, though, sits in the lead. He's second in the, the race right now, but leading that championship. Oh, Lessie having a little fun. Having a nice little no-footer there. At first, I thought he, he made a little mistake, might have caught a rock with the front wheel, but I think at this point, he's actually having a pretty good time out there. And, and uh, for Michael Lessie, it's an opportunity for him not only to uh, have, have a good moto here, but to work his way up in the points. Remember, our top four were really tight coming into the first moto. And Mike was fourth, but has a shot at moving up to third or second. And you know, there might be some financial uh, incentive there from uh, Red Bull KTM for Michael Lessie to be top three. There's all these echelons, 10, five, third. First obviously pays the biggest bonus, but uh, you know, this type of ride that Michael Lessie's putting on here all day means that there could be a little bonus there for KTM for third in the championship. Well, and Mike's gonna make a change at the end of this year, moving over to the Suzuki squad, the Makita Suzuki squad. So. You want to leave on a good note with the Red Bull KTM and uh, carry some momentum over to your new team. Yep, definitely. And you talk about momentum here in these last few races. Grant Langston has had all the momentum, and he's been so patient. Uh, and he's really ridden like a champion and a veteran that he is uh, because he's let every moto kind of come to him. And he's, he's been patient at the beginning of the moto and been strong at the end. The momentum changed, though. And Grant has said it, we've talked about it. When he got on that 2008 Yamaha 450, there's something different about that bike from his 07 that's gave him the confidence throughout the training and testing. And, and it seems to be the chassis. They made some changes there. And uh, Grant Langston really used that to his advantage here. With the motocross season wrapping up and the supercross season, believe it or not, looming on the horizon. And I wonder what that 450 is going to be like for him there. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, started out the season with some injuries. Grant Langston wasn't on anyone's radar, even at the beginning of the motocross championship here this summer. Kept working hard, little by little, got his confidence back. And here at the end of the championship, has been in position to take advantage of, A, Carmichael retiring, B, Stewart, who in early in the season was challenging for those race wins and overall wins, suffers an injury, and Grant Langston has put himself in the position to win this championship. It's a very special moment because it's been seven years. Seven years Carmichael won in a row, so who's the next guy? Grant Langston is stepping up to be that man. Well, you could do the uh, all the what ifs of, well, what if Ricky had run all the races, or what if James didn't get injured? Yeah, that, you can do that, but give credit to Grant Langston. He has ridden very well, and when the door opened, he kicked it wide open and came charging through on that big Yamaha. We'll be right back. Breathe motorcycle racing. Now you can get the latest race results and news right on your phone with weekly green alerts from Speed. Text KX to 773333 on your mobile phone to receive free motorcycle racing text alerts. Speed green alerts presented by Kawasaki. It's a good look at some of the barren land around here in the San Bernardino area, but boy, that barren land makes for great motocross tracks. It makes for an extremely challenging motocross track. This is one of the tracks that we ride during the week at local practice days. And I'm telling you, it's tough. It is very difficult, and it's, uh, it's pretty dangerous because it's so fast. They have these huge hills. Every now and then, you get these boulders, these rocks coming out. Uh, it's tough. Late in the day, we, we talked about it earlier, earlier in the show, how these shadows are starting to cast across, across the hillsides. Well, you can see the, the trouble it's giving our camera guys, just <laughs> trying to get the shots here today, in and out of the shadows and the sunlight. Wrecking some havoc with them as well. Late in the afternoon here in San Bernardino. 
we take a look at Grant Langston is on his way to becoming motor, AMA motocross champion. Take a look back the last time that Yamaha won the AMA motocross championship, Doug Henry in 1998. You gotta give credit to Jim Perry and the entire Yamaha factory squad for working hard and getting this new 450 ready for Grant. Did a lot of testing quickly. Got the bike up to speed, got him in a position to win this thing. And, and, and once I, you know, we keep going back to the end of the season here where Langston has made this big push. Langston also became the first Yamaha rider to win back-to-back -back nationals since David Billman did back all the way back in 2000. So Grant Langston's really done something special and he has put Yamaha on the map here uh, this summer. And it gives all the motocross and supercross fans something to anticipate as we get ready for the new supercross season coming up, which you'll see a tremendous amount of on speed, including Anaheim 1 coming up in January. Will Grant Langston in this new 450 be able to challenge the reigning supercross champ of James Stewart? Well, at that time, the beginning of the Supercross Championship last year, Grant Langston was really on fire. Suff suffered a couple injuries right in a row. But man, has he had a great AMA Championship Motocross Series here. Just unreal. He is so close to winning this championship. Langston working his way around, getting closer and closer to the championship. Let's head down trackside. Here's Aaron. You're taking a look at the number 14 of Kevin Windham, your current leader here for the second moto. Fifth place in that first moto. Once again, he was one of those riders that fell victim to this rough track. Ended up falling down Yamaha Hill, getting stuck underneath of his bike and jamming his thumb. He said it hurts and it's sore, but he's out there riding and through the pain, he's excited to have some time off to get that thumb healed right back up. Boy, what could have been for Kevin Windham? Yeah, what could have been? He's uh, He was so close. He had a couple of setbacks this season. Has rode great like he always does. And uh, I tell you, if he's riding with a sore thumb here today, that makes it hard to hold on to the handlebars. Going down those hills, it, the handlebars pushing on your hand, pushing on that thumb, trying to rip it back. And as he goes up the hills, he's having to hold on with the, with the grip of his fingers. If his thumb can't wrap around the bars, he's got the throttle pinned on the Honda 450. That thing's trying to you know, pull the bars out of his hands. So outstanding effort by Kevin Windham. Today is kind of a microcosm of Kevin's season, really. I mean, he had a great run going here in moto number two. Problems in moto number one that take him out of a, a great run and having to battle through the injury. Boy, Tim Ferry. It looked like when James Stewart got knocked out of the championship hunt due to injury that maybe Tim would be there to win it for Kawasaki, but the last couple of rounds just haven't gone the way he needed it to with the starts. Yeah, he ended up hitting the mat off the start a couple times and uh, just, uh, just had to ride from behind. But if you remember at this time last year, both of these riders, Andrew Short was hurt, Tim Ferry, he didn't even, he didn't even have a ride. So both of these riders, have had outstanding seasons. I mean, they, they should be very proud of the effort that they have put in so far. Well, and Tim Ferry did get uh, some wins for Kawasaki before the motocross season wrapped up, so it's been a very good year for Tim. And a great recovery for Andrew Short. Came into this season just happy to be racing again. Ended up in championship contention, winning uh, a couple motos. Just a couple laps left. Stay with us. We're back to round 12 at Glen Helen Raceway. This is the battle for fifth between a couple of riders in the middle of the championship chase, but seeing their shot at that title slipping away. Andrew Short came into the day second in the points on that red Honda. And Tim Ferry and the Monster Energy Kawasaki came into the day third in the championship. And with Mike Alessi running a little bit better, better Tim Ferry's probably going to slip back to fourth unless he can suddenly really get on the gas here and pick up a couple of spots. Well, the points championship is so tight, even though Grant Langston at the moment looks like he's got that championship locked up. These riders are still battling hard. Great efforts by both Short and Ferry. Tim now moves up a position. And look out. Look how gnarly Mount St. Helens is. It just, you come down and it's just, the, Ralph, the holes in these big squares, bumps, and rollers. Take a look at the replay. This is the uphill. 
You can see all these ruts. The Andrew Short getting kicked a little bit sideways. Did some bumps. Ferry comes flying over the top. Just really blast by Short right at the top of the hill. Just had a good line, good drive. And look at the sun as it comes down up over the hills and the havoc that that's playing on everybody as we get past five o'clock here in Southern California. And, and that's what it looks like for the riders also. So imagine having to navigate this rough and nasty motocross track and then have the sun in your eyes where you can't see. You just have to keep the throttle pin. Mike Brown on the number three, running in seven. He's gonna go back to Europe and finish off the British Championship back there, and he's got a good shot at winning that one, Jeff. Well, Mike Brown has been a contender in the MX1 World Championship uh, all season. Just came here and put in a great ride here today, and it's tough to come in, uh, you know, riding a bike that's not yours, putting together this program just to ride a single event and race against all of the championship contenders here at the top of this moto, uh, and they're totally dialed in. They've got their factory rigs, their family, their, uh, you know, their motor coaches, everything here. Mike Brown came right over and jumped right into this class and showed that he is uh, more than competitive. Grant Langston. Continues to run in second place, which will be good enough at this stage of the day to win the championship. And Jeff, he's won everything there is to win in motocross lights. And now he's about to win the motocross national championship here. And that only leads to Supercross title on the big bike. But I tell you, to win this championship, to be the next guy in line after Ricky Carmichael is quite the accomplishment. And as we take a look at Andrew Short setting at six, still riding hard. I want to thank all the teams and riders and everyone. They gave us something to talk about this summer. It has been a great 2007 season. We're not done with it just yet. We'll have the finish here on speed. He's working his way down the big hills here at Glen Helen. Grand Langston out front, but look who's closing in. Here comes Michael Lessi. These two guys battling for the championship and the overall here today. No doubt about it, Alessi is putting the pressure on. He said, I may not win this championship, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get by you this moto. I'm not letting up. Well, I'll tell you who likes what he sees right now, Roger DeCosta, the man in charge of the Makita Suzuki team, to see the rider he's going to get next year, Michael Lessi, running this hard this late in the season. And Langston, did he just let him by? Langston just pulled up out of the way. He knows that he does not have to finish in front of Alessi to win the championship A or to win the overall. A very smart move by Grant Langston. Knows that at this point, he still has the overall for the day. More importantly, we'll have that number one plate. So, did not need that pressure. You can see Michael Lessie. As we take a look at the replay, Langston pulls over, lets him by. Well, smart, the, smart move. The key for Alessi is with that move, if he can hang on here, he'll move to second in the championship. Began the day fourth in the championship. Of course, he wanted to win the title, but if not, if he can come home second, that's pretty good. That's a great effort for Michael Lessi and Red Bull KTM. Tim Ferry and Josh Hill battling it out over fourth. The spot is Hills for now. Remember, it was Ferry who came into the day third in the championship. And he might slip back to fourth if he's not careful. And I tell you, it's so hard to keep your head in it at this point when you came into the day thinking, okay, we heard the quote from Tim Ferry, I just want to win both motos and let whatever's happened happen. And the moto of this day, either one of these motos have, have not gone the way that he wanted. And that starts to wear on you mentally. It's tough. Chasing Josh Hill around through this slower, tight section. And here's where the horsepower kicks in. And let's see, Tim Ferry's got the inside line. Can he make the pass? Ooh, boy, got tight through there. Made it stick. Great move by Tim Ferry, just pouring in on. I'm telling you, that, that's the first turn area in this big, Daytona style uh, sweeper, if you will. Josh Hill still trying to hang with him. Ferry up to fourth. 
Australian Got to remember, Ferry's a veteran. He's been here for over a decade. This is Josh Hill's first year in the pro class. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham continues to lead here in Southern California. Windham on his way to the checkered flag here in moto number two at Glen Helen. The 12th and final round of the 2007 season. There's the white flag one more time around. And you see Kevin Windham jumping into life's a beach here. He was jumping farther into that section than anyone all day. So spectacular to see him really letting it hang out. Sore thumb and all. And Grant Langston is running in third, but that's going to be enough to wrap up the championship here today in one more lap. What a great feeling. You know he's, he's a little nervous, keeping on two wheels. He's pretty confident in his position and all that, but man, no mistakes here this final lap. See him really taking it easy at this point. Watch when he crosses the mechanics area. Takes a little look over. Don't celebrate too soon. Man, that is a great feeling. I've been there before, Ralph, and I'm telling you, you're coming around. This is that victory lap, and the fans are just hanging over the fence, cheering you on. They know there, there's a new motocross champion in the works, and his name's Grant Langston. And as you said, Jeff, going all the way back to the beginning of the Supercross season, he looked really good out of the gate, very competitive, Went through some injuries, came back late in the year, had to battle through the beginning of the motocross season because it didn't look that great there. But boy, when they got this new 450, Grant and this bike really work well together and he has completely hit his stride. He's gonna carry a tremendous amount of momentum into the short off season, getting ready for Anaheim one first weekend in January. And I tell you, this year we have seen so much great racing a lot of different riders in there winning motos and all this. And, and it's that work during the week that we didn't see from Grant Langston, that we didn't see from Factory Yamaha, that all of that hard work is paying off here today. Kevin Windham continues to work his way around for, as you watch on our Honda aerial cam. Kevin will make it onto the podium. Could have had that overall if moto number one had gone a little better. few corners as Wyndham works his way to the finish. And Grant Langston, as we said earlier, has won every life championship there is to win. And now he's going to add the motocross title as well. And for Grant Langston, this is the biggest championship of his career to date. Unreal effort for him to uh, take home this championship. Wyndham, a few more corners. And the 2007 season will be wrapped up. Here it is, checkered flag for Kevin Windham. He wins moto number two, should finish third overall. Michael Lessi will be the next one across the line. Finish second, he'll finish second in the championship. But Grant Langston and the factory Yamaha team are the best motocross team of 2007. Grant Langston wins the AMA Toyota Motocross Championship presented by FMF. The 2007 title is his with a third place finish in moto number two. What a great feeling that is for Grant Langston and everyone around him, family, friends. You see his wife, Chelsea. It takes so much out of you. As you see the emotions really start to leave Grant Langston's body now, really start to show sure Chelsea has tears of joys under those sunglasses. Champ, go for lap. What a year for Grant Langston. We're going to talk to the new champ when we come back to the giant RV Motocross National. The excitement. Watch all the 2007 AMA Supercross and Superbike events on speed, on demand, online. And it's all free, courtesy of Yamaha. So log on now to speedtv.com, keyword Yamaha, and get up to speed. All the riders on the track are AMA members. Are you? If not, call 1-800-AMA-JOIN or visit amadirectlink.com. AMA rights, riding, and racing. 
Well, the celebration begins here at the Giant RV Motocross National. Round 12 is over, as is the 2007 season, and Grant Langston is a newly crowned motocross champ. And the Yamaha guys celebrating as you take a look at our Toyota Trucks results page. From motor number two, K-Dub, Kevin Windham at the top. Well, let's talk to Kevin Windham. He is standing by as our third place overall finisher with Aaron Bates. Kevin Windham, he hit the go fast button this morning instead of the snooze button. Kevin, last one of the season. What made the difference? You know, I was out there riding around thinking that, like, this might really be my last race. I don't have a deal for next year. Uh, working hard on getting it done and uh, pretty optimistic at this point. But I don't know what the future holds for me. Man, that, that last motor, even the first one, I felt really good. I, I had to, uh, the fall of the bobble and uh, come at the most inopportune time. I really felt like I was putting the pressure on uh, Leslie, but saw out the second motor. felt really good, felt really strong. And so we know Fierce Samsung Honda was working great. Got to believe after a performance like that, he'll find a ride. Oh, there's no doubt. Kevin Windham, man. Awesome talent. Grant Langston wins the overall and the championship today, but second place goes to Michael Lessi. Here's Aaron. His very first season in the MX division, and if our math is correct at this point, second overall in the series. Mike, you got to be pretty pumped on this. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good year, second overall. You know, it's awesome. It's For a rookie, that's awesome. You know, I had a great day today. You know, uh, just I was riding good and just had a little tip over in the second moto and just blew it. You know, I mean... I would have won the overall, my, and it would have been my first ever Ladies premiere overall, but I blew it. But the whole shot was good. You know, I want to thank all the guys, KTM, Rebel Team, Smith Goggles, Alpine Stars, Shark Helmets, Dunlop Tires, FMF, my Dr. Stein at Steincraft Practice, my mom and dad, my girlfriend, Danielle, just all the fans here at Glen Helen are awesome. I appreciate it. Good way to wrap up his career with the Red Bull KTM team. At the end of the year, it's a difference of 16 points between Grant Lakes and Michael Essie. Let's meet the newly crowned champ. Here he is with Aaron. The Zulu Warrior comes out on top. Grant Lance taking home this title. The man to do the honors, the AMA Series manager, Steve Whitelock. Steve, take away. Hey, Grant, look at this. Number one motocross champion. I gave you lights last year. I get to give you a motocross one this year. Congratulations. Thank you. Grant, obviously not your very first championship. The World Championships, Supercross Championships, 125 Championships, now the ultimate MX champion. Where does this one rank? It ranks way up there. I mean, I can't believe it. This is just unbelievable. We, we worked so hard all year, and now um, we did it. Not only to have a first overall win just a couple of weeks ago, but then to come out on top with the championship, did you expect this to happen this year? No, not at all. I mean, there was a point in the season we were back in sixth and struggling, and uh, I just, it's, it's surreal sometimes how we turned around and, and came back and, and took this championship. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. Cheers of joy, all that hard work paid off. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, so much emotion coming out of Grant Langston there. It just, you know, he never gave up. He kept battling all summer long, and right at the end of this championship, where it really counted, it all came together for him. And not a long break to enjoy it either. He's got to start training for Supercross, because Anaheim 1 is up next. Of course, you'll see that here on Speed as we kick off the 2008 Supercross season. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emick, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from San Bernardino. Congratulations, champ. Grant Langston's a new champion.